How far do you think students get in sophomore organic chemistry without drawing structures well? Hello, my name is Kevin Burgess. I've been teaching organic chemistry to undergraduates and graduate students for 30 years. I'd like to tell you what I've seen with respect to drawing structures. A lot of students like to draw structures like this, flat diagram. They look like they've been squashed in the road. They're two-dimensional like a caveman drawing organic structures in a cave. They don't reveal anything about the shapes of molecules or the way they're hybridized. Now the core of most organic diagrams is a linear hydrocarbon chain, the longest linear hydrocarbon chain for any molecule that's not completely cyclized. So how do we draw a linear hydrocarbon chain? Well, there's a very good way to do this. And there are very good reasons why that's the way, and I'd like to show you how. This is R.B. Woodward. In his day, he was renowned for drawing beautiful structures on the chalkboard. In this picture, though, I look at his structure. It doesn't look so good to me, actually. Things have moved on a lot, and people expect much more now. They expect beautifully drawn structures. So can you draw organic molecules nicely? If you think you can, test yourself. Let's go through a few practice problems. Now remember, molecules are best drawn without any wasted symbols, very simply. So can you draw this molecule, but without using the symbols for carbon and hydrogen? Stop the video if you like, try it, and turn the video back on. Which of these representations is the best one for N-butane? Do you know? Can you circle it? Can you draw this bizarre looking molecule in a logical way with the longest hydrocarbon chain zigzagging horizontally? Try it, please. Many students never come to understand this and they fall behind in the curve. They keep losing point over and over again because this is a fundamental thing that they don't get. They haven't mastered. So I wrote an ebook to help students in my class learn how to draw organic molecules more clearly. And now I've published that ebook on Apple Books. It's available for about half the price of a cup of coffee. It's not a textbook. Students have enough textbook. What they need are problems. So this is a workbook with an attitude. It has lots and lots of problems. It relates Newman projections to drawing zigzag organic structures, so students realize the connection between these two. It introduces common abbreviations for organic fragments. That's something that takes a bit of repetition to learn, and I come back to it in the third ebook in this series. There are inset videos that the hard copy first edition of Sophomore Organic Chemistry 1 by Inquisition has been available for a couple of years can't have. You can look at those videos and resize the concept. Inquisition means severe questioning. Severe questioning is sometimes painful because we don't remember much of what we see. And here, we don't remember a lot of what we read even. What we remember is what we think about a lot. And forcing the brain to think about organic chemistry when it could be thinking about other things is sometimes torture. Thinking about organic chemistry, for instance, is a lot harder than thinking about social media, checking messages, and arranging dates. I understand that. So you need an instrument to torture your brain with organic chemistry. And this book tortures your brain with tricky questions, multiple choices, drawings, and even structured sentences. What could be more terrible than that? There's no gruesome teaching device that I could think of that I didn't put into the book. Because psychology says if a student can recognize a problem presented in multiple ways, they've got much more chance of coming up with the answer. But if a student only recognizes a problem when it's packaged in this presentation, it's much more difficult for them. The ebook is designed to be downloaded onto your tablet. The student fills in the answers, and when they've got to the end of the book, only at the end, they check the answers they've given versus the answers I've provided online. And any of their answers which they think are wrong, they delete. 
And then the trick is to forget, not immediately, the next day or the day after, go back to that chapter on the tablet without looking at the notes, without looking at the textbook first, and fill in the blanks. Fill in the answers to the ones the student got wrong in the first place. And then check them again against my answers and repeat the process. In this way, you're forcing the brain into active recall. And psychology says that's one of the best ways to learn. But if you cheat, if you look at the notes or the textbook before filling in the answers, if you just use my answers to fill in on the tablet, horrible then the learning effect dissipates and the torture must begin again. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.